Today we're talking cold water fish. I've got my top 10 favorites besides goldfish because I think you already know those don't need a heater. But that's what I'm going to consider a cold water fish. Something that doesn't require a heater in your home and can still thrive. Now for the most part, that's 65 and up for most people, but a lot of these fish on this list can go down so cold that if you were to put them outside, they can have ice on top of the pond. My absolute favorite one I would say over the years is a live bearer known as the Sunset Variatus. Great looking color, very hardy. Is a live bearer, means giving birth to other live fish and gets about two or three inches and we already know can live in that temperature range. So keep the pH above seven and mix them with maybe live plants and some of the other fish on this list and you're gonna have a fish that you're gonna fall in love with and I'll put them even in heated aquariums. I absolutely love this fish. I've been breeding it for 10 plus years. Love it, love it, love it. Get yourself some of those. You can get them at like PetSmart even. They're cheap and they're so good. So Sunset Variatus, oof, gotta be my top recommendation. The next one I've got is the Celestial Pearl Danio. Looks like a little trout. They also can go fairly cold. We'll even breed at those temperatures. They're a nano fish, so if you've got a small aquarium, they work out great. Even if you have larger fish, like the Variatus Platy we might have already talked about, uh, they can go with those as well. As far as water parameters go, anywhere between like six, eight to seven, six or so, and moderate hardness. They like little foods. They're really reclusive. Get a school of them of six or more and uh, enjoy them. That's the important part there, and they'll weave in and out of those plants for you. I think you'll enjoy them. Next up, I've got kind of an oddball one. Maybe you've never heard of the Rainbow Shiner. It is a native to the United States. Absolutely gorgeous fish when it matures. Gets all that purple and pink spangling on it, and it only gets about three, three and a half inches, which is awesome. Cooler water for sure. Don't let them get way too hot, but they look like they'd be really nippy, but in our experience, we've been able to keep them with guppies and endlers and all that kind of stuff, and they don't even eat the babies, which is crazy to us. So we found them to be very peaceful, but they're gonna be hard to find. Usually you gotta go somewhere like Jonah's Aquarium or some oddball US only native site that would even sell them, and then they can be $10 and up, but you wanna get at least six of those, and then wait, it takes about a year, and you get the best color fish that you've ever seen, and uh, yeah, I wish they were more popular in the hobby, but unfortunately they are not. But definitely cool, keep them at some point in your hobby. Next up is the Hillstream Loach. This is one of the best algae eaters you can use in an unheated aquarium. They look like little alien stingrays sucking onto the side of the aquarium, eating that flat algae, diatom algaes, green algaes, that kind of stuff. And you can breed them, which is nice. They'll go into nooks and crannies on the rocks. And uh, they're just a little bit hard to catch pH kind of 6.6 six and up to maybe 7, 8 or so. You can maybe stretch it a little bit higher. There's some other types of uh, hillstream loaches as well. I focus on just the one that's going to be called a hillstream loach. There's the butterfly loach and there's the Chinese butterfly loach and all that. Same care requirements. A little expensive on the $12 side. You only need to get one. You can get more if you want to breed them. Uh, I always like groups of one or three or more just to split up any aggression you could have going on in there. And I would say a minimum of a 20 gallon tank for one, maybe a 10 if you really can grow a lot of algae for it. Next up, we've got Endler's Live Bearer. Believe it or not, they can usually go room temperature. They're a small fish. And the important part here is I wanna focus on the original Endler's Live Bearer, not the ones that now have crazy good colors and all that. They've been inbred and usually want warmer temperatures. If we get ones that are just standard Endler's, very, very hardy, pH of 6.5, 6.6, all the way up to 8.5, 8.6, crazy. Can be in as small as five gallons or bigger, doesn't matter. Uh, they like planted tanks, get a group of, you know, maybe two males and four females. You create a little factory and just have life always bursting at the seams in that aquarium. And uh, you can mix with a lot of these other fish too, which is great, especially once they get going. Next up, we've got the Clown Killifish. Looks like a rocket stays at the top, which is kind of nice if you're gonna mix with some of these other little fish. Do put a lid on there because they will hop right out of that aquarium if you're not careful. And the pH again, six, five, six, six, all the way to seven, eight or so. Uh, even though their scientific name is Anulatus, Anulatus, they live for more than a year, which is great. They're relatively easy to breed if you have some floating plants in there. 
moderate hardness. They get along with everything. Don't really, you know, even though they're called Achilles fish, they're not killing, they're, they're docile. It's great. They look good, and that blue eye will stare across, uh, at you from across the room. So it's a win-win and a nice community fish to be putting in that unheated aquarium that you might have. We're going to talk about a bottom dweller, and that is the cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp, in my experience, I've been able to breed them outside. They've had ice over the top of them, uh, and they add that splice, splice, spice of red color to your aquarium, and they'll eat all the little debris off the bottom. They'll eat a little bit of algae. They'll reproduce for you. They'll provide food for maybe some of the bigger fish when they're breeding. In general, pretty easy to get from a local shop or a club meeting or just your locale in general. Every once in a while they show up in a PetSmart, Petco type of environment, but usually you have to go to a mom and pop store. Fairly easy. They do need some calcium in the water. You can you can uh, research on how to take care of those. We have tons of videos on how to breed them and all that kind of stuff. They just are a great cleaner and that's why you need them. You need some kind of something to round out the crew in there and that's why this guy can live with those uh, Hillstream loaches. They can live with the fish and they get in those nooks and crannies. Next up, we've got the dojo loach. This is a loach that gets about 10 inches to a foot, kind of like a hot dog. And uh, they are also sometimes are called the weather loach. Very fun fish that can kind of brew into the gravel sometimes. They've got the whiskers on their mouth, their type of loach, and they will uh, eat quite a bit. They will eat smaller fish. If you have a one foot long loach and a tiny celestial pearl danio, you might run into some troubles there, or a tiny shrimp. So. These would be on the bigger side, maybe with the Variatus platys and some other mid-size uh, non-heated fish, like maybe some of the barbs I'll talk about. Uh, but again, wide variation of pH, anywhere from 6.6 6 to 8, and in general should be fairly cheap and easy to find in that $5 range or so. All right, next up we've got some barbs, and the ones I would recommend would be uh, the rosy barb. The rosy barb can go very cold. You can get it in long fin variety, normal variety. You can get it in a neon variety. And in general, they're quick, but not super aggressive. And so you can keep them with the other mid-sized fish like the dojo loach and the sun, uh, sunset variatus, that type of stuff. And the other barb I'd recommend is the gold barb. Also can go in unheated, but it is quite a bit more aggressive. So maybe you do two types of barbs and a dojo loach and that would work and not mix in some of these more peaceful species. But all the barbs, very adaptive, 6'6 six, six to 8'6, and uh, just put food in there, they'll mow it down, no problem at all. Uh, I recommend at least a 20 gallon aquarium, if not a 29, because these fish are gonna get, you know, three inches plus. The last suggestion I have is the classic white cloud. They come in long form, they come in gold, they come in just normal kind of gray and red color, and they're great bulletproof, very cheap, can go in almost any size aquarium, can go in almost any water parameter, so long as it doesn't get way too hot. You're golden, go pick yourself up six, ten of them, whatever it is. You can even pick them up as feeders sometimes, but I would quarantine them. And just enjoy them for the simplistic beauty. They used to be called the poor man's neon tetra. They've been in the hobby forever because they're great. Try that fish out and uh, make sure you watch some of our other videos, we have top 10 ideas for your 10 gallon here, and we've got a playlist of other species profiles here to watch other specific profiles, like maybe that cherry shrimp profile we talked about. And hopefully you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you around.